for any AI agent to perform a certain task, we need to measure performance. We, we need to have an environment properly defined for that agent. We need to know what the actuators are and what are the sensors. Now, now by now, I think you can understand that the agent itself has embedded sensors, actuators, and the performance is gauged based on the uh, outcome of the decisions. Environment is still left unexplored. So just go, let's go and see it. So the task environment for an AI agent can be broadly of six types. It can be fully observable or partially observable, which means that either you know the whole domain that, that, is, that encapsulates the environment or you don't. For instance, in a game of tic-tac-toe, the environment is fully observable. Uh, the agent knows all possible states. But for a self-driving car, the environment is partially observable. Only whatever can be sensed by the computer vision system or the camera of the car is the observable part of the landscape. The second type is deterministic or stochastic. A deterministic is a non-probabilistic and well-defined and a solid structured environment. Uh, for instance, uh, for a football playing AI agent, the football ground is a deterministic environment because the breadth and the width, it stays the same, it does not change. A stochastic environment such as, uh, such as the, the place of an iron in an atom, it's continuously randomly distributed and so, so that randomness where you cannot put your finger on what is the exact placement of a certain part of the environment that is stochastic. The third type is episodic or sequential. Episodic uh, is something that, that happens after an interval. For instance, Christmas sales. If there is an agent that has to optimize Christmas sales, it will happen once a year, which is an episodic uh, environment. Uh, but if someone has to measure daily temperature, that's a sequential uh, environment. Uh, fourth category, category is static juxtaposed to dynamic. Now, static environment, again, is an environment that does not change. So you have coded it once, like a game of tic-tac-toe or chess or football match. The rules won't change. It is static. Uh, opposing to that, there is a concept of dynamic environment. And the best example is the, your social media uh, dynamics. Uh, today, uh, someone is your friend. Tomorrow, you will drop that friend. Uh, you are posting your family picture today, but tomorrow you'll start posting something on politics. So the way the friends, the likes, the choices are constantly changing, that is a dynamic environment. The fifth category is a discrete environment or continuous environment. It depends mostly on the task at hand, whether we want to choose discrete environment or continuous environment. For instance, if we are measuring something uh, which, which has a whole number, then that has to be a discrete environment. Uh, number of classes taken by a student, uh, that is discrete. Continuous, if you're measuring temperature, or if you if you're measuring a a health case of a patient, health history of a patient being monitored live by some sens sensors, that will be a continuous environment. Lastly, we have a single agent environment or a multi-agent environment. Now, if, if you think of playing a game, we just need one person that is a single agent, but, um, but playing football, playing tic-tac-toe, all of those are multi-agent environment. Why do we need to define environment? Well, so far we have defined at length the types of AI agents and the types of environment because we have to, as an AI expert, make a decision how to design and what are the options to design. Whatever problem we have, we need to see how best that problem can be solved, what kind of environment and what kind of an AI agent in that environment is best suited to solve the problem. To answer that question, we definitely need to know what is an environment and what are the types of AI agents.